Back in September of 2011, I started really thinking about the next project I was going to do. I knew I was ready to record. I had enough songs written, um, and I felt like it was time for something new to emerge and a new recording to take place. I believe there's a narrative to all of history, and it begins and it ends with Triune God. And I wanted to tell that story, that story that moves from creation through the fall, redemption, and the final restoration of all things. So I chose hymns that would accurately tell that story and take you through those movements. So the album is a concept album, and it's meant to be listened to, and it's meant to be understood in, in context as a whole story, as a whole narrative. And I think it beautifully lays out the gospel, you know, within under an hour. After we, when we all come back in, I want that to elevate a little bit. Not like a solo elevate, you know, but I do want more energy to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I connected with Danny Hageman, who's producing uh, this album, and Benny Grotto is the engineer. And they work together every week in that studio. Um, so that helps tremendously that they already have a pre-existing relationship. So they know each other, they know the room, they know all the gear. Uh, but Mad Oak, I think, is a really special place because it has this, this vibe and this feel about once you walk in, you just feel at home. You feel comfortable and you look around in the room and you say, yeah, I mean, this is a place that I want to track an album. Stars above in I really treasure the hymns and I needed people around me to want to bring out the best in me musically. Um, I didn't want to write alone, I didn't want to record alone, I didn't want to do this thing on my own, I wanted to do this with a group of people believing in the same thing, going after the same vision. So it just made sense to put all these people in the same room together four days and kind of capture um, something really unique and special um, that can't be recreated. In the past I've recorded a typical way of scratch, drums, bass, guitars, auxiliary, vocals, all of that. But we wanted to just create something together all at the same time and capture an experience in a moment. So what you hear is what we played in that room. And I love that, because it's organic and it's raw, it's honest, but it's not overly thought out, it's not overly produced. I didn't want this to sound like church music. I wanted this to sound uh, authentic to me, something that comes out of my own life that is deeply rooted in the South and in blues and gospel and country music. It was important for me to represent that well and represent that honestly, to pair that with these, these ancient lyrics in such a way that makes them come alive. So I call this Poets and Saints because it is where the pen of the poets becomes the song of the saints. It's where we interact and engage and connect with hundreds of years of history of the church. And we identify with those poets and we identify with those saints. So those songs now become our songs. So that's what I hope for. I hope when people listen to this, that they listen to it in its entirety, they listen to it in its context, but they see it as something bigger than themselves. They see it as being a part of this narrative that has not even gone on just for several hundred years, but for all of humanity. Come on down. Hey, Satchelors, you believe? Come on down. Come on Well, the album starts with this hymn, Praise the Lord, All Praise and Blessing. And what I wanted to communicate with that is that there was a time where God made the earth. 
and everything was beautiful and everything was good. Before any corruption, before any pain and sin, it was just beautiful and it was good. The second hymn takes you to the place where man rebels against God and it's that utter darkness, it's that utter despair, that, that, that depravity, that hopelessness. And it really takes you into that place of, of loss. Glory Be to Jesus may be one of my favorite tracks on this album. There's something about it, every time I play it, every time I sing it, it really, really moves me. And I think it's a beautiful hymn. What we wanted to do is take these really hopeful lyrics, uh, but put underneath them this really um, dark, sad, mournful music that communicated what was taking place at the crucifixion. Alleluia, hearts to heaven and voices raised is the song of the resurrection. And that's everything. Without the resurrection, there is no hope, there is no life, there is no life eternal. So that is just this triumphant song that's just saying, you know, He is risen from the dead, He is risen from the dead. And I love the line in there, it says, Now the iron bars are broken, Christ from death to life is born. So we just resound that anthem again and again and again, He is risen from the dead. To me, every hymn on this album is important to tell the story. You can't pull one out and the story still be fully true. You have to have all the, the pieces, the chapters, if you will, for the story to make sense. And most certainly the last one, Christ is Coming, Let Creation, because that is a declaration that Christ will come again. He will make all things new. He will fully restore all things and bring uh, the fullness of His kingdom, a new heaven, and a new earth. And so that's what that's what we hope for, that's what we long for, that's what we desire. I hope this album will be a gift to the church. Certainly in many ways, these songs have been a gift to the church for hundreds of years. And in some ways it's a re-gifting of an ancient thing in a new way, presenting it to the church in such a way that will give people new songs to sing, new ways to think about God, new ways to experience God. These hymns are treasures and I want to give them back to the church.